Welcome back everyone. My name is Pedron and this is where we do machine learning codes and concepts. Let's get started. All right, now let's do random forest classification part in Python. So in the previous video, we talked about the regression part. So let's go to the lectures, module 10, bagging and boosting, and then Python uh, for bagging. Uh, we covered the, the random forest regression and uh, now we're going to do the classification. So I'm not gonna go as detailed as we did for the regression part because so many of the functionalities are shared between random forest regression class and random forest classifier class in scikit-learn. So this video is gonna be shorter. So if you wanted to make sure that you follow all the details, so to check them out, both of them. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna run it locally on my computer. So if you want, Especially if you don't have PyCard installed in your computer, you can go ahead and open it Google, in Google Colab. But you have to install, you have to do pip install PyCard and bracket full because you want to get access to the XGBoost, CatBoost, and the LightGBM. Uh, especially CatBoost and LightGBM because XGBoost is in PyCard 3.0 is already there. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to run it on my local computer. So this is the file, Random Forest Classification Credit Card. Uh, notebook. So I already connected to my uh, right kernel, which is PyCaret, and let's go. Let's go ahead and run it. So running the, um, let's load the libraries, and then set the random state to 1000. You can do that if you want to get exact same results as I do. Uh, let's go ahead and read the data frame, and this is a data set called credit card. And actually this is, um, the, here we can quickly go over the list of variables and what are they, but this is very typical. When it comes to classification, you know, one of the uh, most interesting tasks that we can do is to say if somebody's gonna default under credit card or not, right? So this is what we're gonna do. So our target variable is gonna be default. It's a binary variable, zero, one, either someone is gonna default or not. And we have a bunch of cool features and here is a list of features, right? So ID, obviously, um, it's not informative here. Limit balance, so this is the amount of given credit card. Well, this is in uh, the some dollars. And uh, this is basically the balance of credit card. We have gender, we have education, marriage. And obviously, this is uh, the, these are categoricals. Marriage is also categorical. And remember, random forest can handle categorical features, but can, cannot handle a string. So I, we have to go and use the label encoder thing to change these ones from strings to just some uh, numbers, right, uh, to labels. And then after that, we can make them categories as well. All right, we have age, we have pay one through pay six. In the original data, it was pay zero, but we cleaned this data set, we changed pay zero to pay one, so we have pay one to pay six. And this is basically the repayment status, right? The repayment status in a specific month, which was in this data set is in September 2005. And the repayment status is something like this. It can be minus two if, if they didn't use the credit card. If it can be minus one, which is paid in full, it can be zero, a revolving credit, one, two, three, and up all the way to the nine. So nine means that payments delay for nine months and above. One means payments delay for one month, right? So obviously the larger this number, the worse. So this can be ordinal as well, uh, categorical. And then we have, so we have six of these payments for, for bill amount. So this is amount of bill statement in, again, this is the time that the data set was collected, September 2005. And we have bill amounts from one to six, which goes six months back from September, right? And then we have also pay amounts. So how much of that bill was the paid in September, August, July, and all the way back to April? And then finally, this is our default thing, right? Default payment next month. So this is our default payment, yes or no. All right, so that's it. This is a data set. We can quickly check it out if there's any missing variable here. Uh, we're all good. And there is no duplicates. So I think the data is clean. Then our next task was to look at the, use the n unique method to just make sure that what variable should be what in terms of type, right? Should be categorical or what? So I think it's pretty straightforward for this task. We know that sex, education, marriage are going to be categorical and then pays. Yeah, they are going to be categorical as well because it goes from minus two to nine. Some of them don't have all those things. So especially pay one and pay five and six. And then the rest are just some numerics except the default, which is our obviously our target variable. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pre-process the data. We are going to re uh, prepare it for all machine learning models. 
and then how we're here we're gonna apply random forest and then hopefully the is able to handle the categorical features for us right so i have um in this case we're gonna have an ordinal categorical as well right so we have ordinal education so education have different levels and obviously it, should, it is ordinal the bachelor is different than master or high school we have uh, and we have some uh, categoricals that we need to make sure that they are labeled right they're not strings sex and marriage they were string in the original data we have to change your type to numbers right because again random forest cannot handle the strings okay and then we are gonna do uh, some some regular categorical variables pay one pay two pay three uh, up to pay six okay so now that we have decided what we want to do let's go ahead and use a bunch of those encoders from scikit-learn package First thing, we are going to start with categorical variables, right? So actually, I'm, I'm going to do the ordinal encoder thing. So I'm going to turn this education to ordinal encoder. So from the scikit-learn preprocessing, let's import ordinal encoder. I'm creating an object OE ordinal encoder. And then the, to just make sure that just like the one that we did in regression analysis, I want to make sure that I'm keeping track of all the mapping. So that's why I create this mapping dictionary. And I'm not doing anything fancy here. I say go through all this list of ordinal categoricals here. In this case, there's only one, but this is more general. So if you have multiple, you can just do one for loop, right? And then go ahead and check these columns. And in the data frame, change those columns to the transformed version, right? This is what we're doing. We're doing ordinal categorical fit transform the same column. And then just uh, for interpretability aspect, we're going to keep track of these mappings because we want to know that what are those numbers, right? So that's why I'm going to add this uh, column name, which is education to my dictionary as a key. And the item is going to be categories, right? All right. So now if I look at the mappings, well, let me run this one first and this one. So the mapping for education is something like this, grad, high school, other university. So now you know that if I haven't done this, for example, you want to visualize a single tree or you want to do some feature importance for different levels of education. If you want to do something like that, you have no idea what are those numbers it stands for. But now I know grad is zero, high school is one, other is two, and university is three. So this is important to keep track of these mappings for interpretability aspect. For, uh, for model performance, it really doesn't matter you know, at the end of the day if you are not interested into that interpretability part. Okay, so we're done with the ordinal categorical ones. Let's look into the label ones. So for label encoding, I'm going to go ahead and borrow the label encoder from scikit-learn preprocessing, create an object LE, the same for loop, the same mapping kind of uh, uh, functionality, and everything is the same, right? So go check everything in this labeled categorical, which we have two of them for sex and marriage. And because they are not ordinal, we just need to make sure that they're numbers. Uh, we are going to use label encoder, fit transform, and then save the classes. So let's run this. And now we know that female is zero, male is one, married is zero, otter is one, and single is two. Okay, so there you go. So we have, and then uh, I think now it's time to make sure that all these variables are categorical, right? So this is ordinal, this is the labeled, and these are our regular categoricals. Let's make all of them categorical, right? So this step is not, just pay attention, this step is not necessary for random forest because random forest can handle these categorical variables. However, we're gonna do it anyways to just make sure that you, you know how to do it. And if you wanna make, if you wanna use another machine learning models, you have to do it anyways, okay? So that's why I'm gonna say this is my all categoricals, it's ordinal categorical plus label categorical plus categoricals, right? So actually I can make it in two lines, you see what we're doing. So let's do, let me run this one, all categoricals. So these are all our categorical variables. Now I'm gonna change their type, this is a list, I'm gonna change the type of this list to category. That's it. Now if I look at the DF info, now our variables are the, the way that we want. So sex, education, marriage are going to be numbers, but categorical. Pays are going to be numbers, but categorical. And the same story for, yeah, yeah, for all of these things. Okay, cool. If you look at the head of the data set, 
Now you know that, uh, for example, education three means what? So remember, we have to keep the track of that mapping. Otherwise, it's going to be complicated to read it. So education three means what? Means zero, one, two, three. Means university. Okay. There you go. So the shape of the data set is, uh, well, 30,000 rows and 25 the columns and one of them is going to be well one of them is id one of them is target variable so we have 23 well actually 23 features not 24 so we're going to have 23 features okay so remember if you want to now listen this this this, this data set is ready now right if i want to use for example any other machine learning models i have to go ahead and use one hot encoding to change the type of these categories to one hot encoded right and if we do that, we can, for example, do it. So this is this is not for random force. I just want to show you how uh, big the dimension is going to be for any other machine learning model compared to random forest, right? Or compared to decision tree based models. Uh, we have if if I do PD dot get dummies to this data frame with twenty five features, it's going to go ahead and and even if we drop the first value first dummy classes. Uh, it's going to go ahead and change the shape from 25 to 80, right? So again, ID and target variable, if you exclude them, we are going to end up with 78 features, right? So if you want to work with any other machine learning model, we have 78 features. But Random Forest can do it with 23 features. So this is so cool, right? Okay, so then let's talk about scaling features. Because this is decision tree based model, we don't need to scale the features. Okay, now our next task is to just look at the balance of our target variable, right? This is this is what I have been, what I've been telling you all the time that if you're dealing with a classification task, your your first job is to see how balanced the data is, right? So we can use cross tab function and depending on how many classes we have, we can see 0 1 here because we have only two classes. 77.8% class 0, no default, 22% class 1 default, right? This is, uh, well, actually, this is one of the uh, data sets that we have a lot of defaults here. Typically, when it comes to credit card defaults, we have less than 5%. The data set is a lot more imbalanced. But here, again, this is good. You know, it's relatively balanced. But we can play around with this thing that we can, we can use a balanced version of random forest and things like that. So I'm going to talk about it. All right. So now let's go ahead and to do and define our feature space and split the data. So default is going to be our target variable, Y, and everything else but defaults and ID is going to be our features. We're going to do 30, 70 uh, split, test and train. All right, so now we are ready to look into our random forest classifier from scikit-learn. Okay, so let's import random forest classifier from scikit-learn ensemble module. And before I do that, let me quickly show you the documentation and quickly review what we have, right? So let's go to the documentation. So this is a documentation for Random Forest Classifier. So last time we talked about, let me actually pull it up. Yeah, last time we talked about Random Forest Regressor. Now let's talk about Random Forest, Random Forest Classifier. The, they are pretty much the same. So not, I'm not going to spend time talking about the details here because we already covered them in regression, but there are some differences. So let's focus on differences, right? So the first one is criterion. Uh, so we know that for classification, we are going to do either Gini or Entropy. And so by default, it's going to be Gini. And then we have max def, number of estimator, number of trees in the forest. So these are some, uh, some uh, regularization parameters, mean weight, fraction leaf, max features. Again, we talked about this max feature in regression as well, because this is random for us. At each split, we're going to work with a subset of features. So what is that subset? A square root of number of features. If you have 100 features, square root is 10. I don't know. We can do log. or If you if you leave it as none, it's going to be a bagging model, not random for us, because it's using all the features at all splits. Max leaf node, mean impurity decrease, bootstrap. We talked about the bootstrap thing, right? Because, you know, let me show you something. So this is our... From the theory lecture, we said that uh, if you want to do, yeah, this is random for us, right? Uh, if you, if at each, so this, imagine I have thousands of these, I, I have 500 trees, right? So we have a forest with 500 trees, right? It means that we're going to have 500 different realization of the original data, right? And you're doing it with bootstrap. So this is what the bootstrap is doing. And so... 
uh, and we, we talked about out of bag score in the regression part so make sure you check it out and uh, yeah what else is different here the class weight okay so class weight is a big difference between random forest classifier and regressor because we're doing classification task right if your data set is highly imbalanced let's say i don't know 90 percent one class 10 percent the other class you can change the weights inversely related to the frequency of the observations right if one class is dominant give it less weight if one class is just minority give it more weight so this is what we're doing but there are two ways to do that in random forest in decision trees we said that there's only balance and none in random forest we have balance balance subsample and then none right so i'm going to talk about the balance and balance subsample in a python because it's it's a lot easier to see it there okay and then the rest is cost complexity pruning method and max samples. Yeah, I think we covered everything else. So let's go back to the Python. So this model that we trained, because we didn't specify anything here, so it's going to be bagging model, right? Because we didn't say that max feature is equal to SQRT, SQR root, or log, right? So this is our bagging model. And then we can make some predictions. Because this is a classification task and it's random for us, it's a probabilistic model we can do we can predict the probabilities as well right so we have seen this before in knn we had something like this predict probability in logistic regression we have predict probability and we in random forest we have predict probability too like in decision trees right so i can look at those probabilities you know predicted probabilities and basically here's the they're they are spread it around between zero and hundred percent so if you, if you say that there's a threshold of 50%, anything below that, no default, anything above that default, it's kind of, it's kind of okay because, again, this is, this is spread out all around. All right, but the predictions are what we get. By default, the threshold is 50%. So it says that if anything is above 50%, label it as 1. Below 50%, label it as 0. So you can, you can look into those the numbers as well. So, for example, if I type y hat and then show you the number so it's going to be a bunch of zero ones right all right okay let's evaluate the model we have y hat we have y tests let's go ahead and create a confusion matrix right so let's import the relevant uh, functions and this is our oops this is our confusion matrix again good numbers true positive to true positive true negative and this is a false positive false negative these are bad numbers right so we want to make sure that they are small but let's see what we can do then there's this built-in classification report so if i do classification report pass the actual versus prediction so this is what we get right so overall the f1 score of the model is 49 percent it's not decent but we'll see this is a not tuned model so we, have, we can go ahead and tune it and see if we can do better right Accuracy is 82%, but because the data set is relatively imbalanced, I will focus on F1 score, especially look at the recall. Among those observations that in reality they were default, the model was able to pick up only 38% of them. So this is alarming, so we have to do something about it, right? So one easy fix, well, yeah, one, one way to do that is to reduce the threshold to avoid too many false negatives, but uh, we, can, we can play around with a bunch of stuff. So these are the tuning hyperparameters. We already covered them uh, in the documentation. So let's scroll down. Again, feel free to pause the video or just look at the notebook and read these things in details. Now we are going to do a grid search, right? So just like in random forest regression, uh, we can do grid search in random forest classification as well. We have lots of uh, moving parts, hyperparameters that we can play around with them, right? Here, just for you no, know, just to for uh, for sake of showing you something i'm going to i'm going to try some combinations right so this is my parameter grid the number of estimators we're going to look at the forest of 100 trees and 500 trees why 500 why not 200 again this is subjective you can go ahead and play around with all these things criteria we can go entropy genie and we can also leave it as none to make sure that it's looking at the uh, bagging as well oh uh, sorry this is no that's not so I take it back. So this is criterion, right? So entropy genie, and then this is max feature. So this is what I was talking about. So we can leave it as SQRT log two or none to make sure that it's bagging. But again, here, just I wanted to show you something. And that's why we're gonna do a very few combinations. So two multiply two, it's four multiply one, four multiply one, four. And if I do five fold cross validation, so we're gonna have 20 different fits, right? 
and this is going to take some time right so i'm not going to run it but you can see that each of them is going to take five seconds some of them 21 seconds because this is a larger larger forest i assume yeah this is 500 uh, 500 estimators yeah but you get the idea so we have done this in regression as well so i'm going to skip it here so grid search cross validation go ahead and try different combination of these hyperparameters refit the model it means that find the best parameters and refit the model and then save the output I, will, I can extract that output off of this grid object right so here is the training part it's going to take some time and then the best parameters turns out to be entropy max step 10 log 2 and 500 trees in the again this is not this is not this is not magic or this is not super science you know this is more of an art or subjective or or it comes to your domain expertise what kind of data sets you're dealing with for this type of data set we need a larger trees we need more complex model or things like that right so but uh, it comes with practice and we can go ahead and uh, make some predictions for our optimized y hat right if i do grid.predict and make some predictions in the test set i call it y hat optimized then we can go ahead and uh, look at the performance of the y hat optimized the optimized version right so confusion matrix uh, hopefully these are better numbers but classification report so now we have 48 percent 37 percent 68 percent let's let's go back what was the bagging thing the bagging numbers were 49 38 well actually if anything it's worse than the simple bagging and remember we are not looking into simple bagging here because we only look into random forest with log to uh, max number of features right so yeah so this means that our simple bagging was a better model but anyways you get the idea so you have to spend some time play around with these functionalities and find the best one okay uh yeah if you're doing it in google colab and then you can run it for hours and then just to try different many different combinations okay so here this is i leave it as an exercise we talked about it in very detail that how you can use cross validation or out of score uh, out of bag um, observations to estimate the accuracy in the test set right so i want you to do it as an exercise estimate this number and using two methods cross validation and out of bag scores okay so the make sure you watch what we covered in the regression part so we talked about those things in very detail here so i'm, I'm not going to go over it now all right so the next task is to deal with imbalanced target variable remember our target was 77.8 22.1 right so the the random forest that we tried uh, to train was using the, the basically no weights right it's, it was giving all the observation the same weight it, either if it is default or no default but what if you want to give this class less weight because they're more frequent and this class more weight because they're less frequent what if that's the case if that's the case you can use those two methods balanced and balanced subsample when you're training a model when you do random forest you have to just let's go back to the documentation remember class weight is equal to balance or balance subsample so what is balance balance mode uses the value of y to automatically adjust weights inversely proportional to class frequency so this is lots of words so let's see in action what do we get so there's a formula for that right the weights are going to be number of samples divided by number of classes multiply the frequency of the classes right so let me show you something this is if i this is numpy bin count it's going to count the number of observation in each class uh, 23,364 no defaults 6,636 defaults right so this is this is our uh, bin count y and number of samples is going to be 30,000 right so i have 30,000 samples and i have this bin count and i want to use this formula so what i need is just take this one and divide it by each of those numbers so 30,000 divided by this 30,000 divided by this right in python we can do it like this i call i call it balanced weight so 30,000 divided by 23,000 it's going to be 1.28 30,000 divided by 6,000 is going to be 4.5 and if these are going to be the weights that the random forest is using if i use balanced right and now the interesting thing is that if I if I normalize these weights, so basically taking these numbers and divided by the summation, so this is what I'm doing here, right? 
taking those balanced weights divided by the summation of those balanced weights. What do I get? I get 22%, 77%. Does this look familiar? Yeah, let's go back. Do you see that? Our class zero, no default was 77%, default was 22%-ish. Now the weights are kind of inverse. 22, 77. So that should make perfect sense. So what is the difference between balanced and balanced sample, subsamples? So balance is gonna use the entire data set and give you the weights, right? Subsample is gonna look at, balanced subsample is gonna look at basically the observations that were used in that specific tree, right? So remember guys, let me actually pull up the, yeah. If you do a balanced version, it's gonna use all these observations, right? If you use a subsample weighting, so it's gonna look at each tree individually, right? So it's gonna look at tree number one and look at what observations we have, use these observations, and then cal use this formula and calculate the weights. For tree two, we have different weights. For three, uh, for tree three, we have different weights, and et cetera, et cetera. So this is, so that's why it's gonna take longer, as you guess, right? So let's actually read it. Um, uh, this balanced subsample in scikit-learn nanoforce classifier is similar to balanced mode, but it calculates the weights based on the bootstrap sample for each tree grown, right? This means that the weights of the training data samples will vary from tree to tree. So this is exactly what we said, okay? So now let's try one of them, for example. So I'm gonna try the easier one, the balanced version, because the subsample, balanced subsample is gonna take longer. So let's do, for example, let's train another random forest, which is a balanced version of that. I call it random forest balanced with 1000. Well, sorry, this is a random state, 1000. The criteria, let's, let's go with entropy, max feature, log two. We can do SQRT as well, square root. The max depth is 10, class weight is balanced. So this is where we are specifying that thing, right? So let's go ahead and run this. And then now we can make some Y hat predictions, right? So the predictions are gonna be basically, I'm training the model, I'm gonna do it all in one line. Train the model, make some predictions, right? Now we can look at the confusion matrix. So look at that, this true negative, this false negative has changed dramatically, right? It used to be, let me show you, it used to be a larger number, 1200, right? Now it's, it's half of that almost, is it half? Yeah, well, 800, right? So this, there's a huge improvement in this number, which seems that, which means that my recall is gonna be a lot better. Uh, this one got worse, I guess. Let's see, the true negative, the true positive, sorry, false, yeah, this is either false positives. False positive get worse, because there's a trade-off, right? There's a trade-off if you get a better recall, so you, you have to sacrifice something. But let's look at those numbers, there you go. So this is our, and uh, this is our balanced random forest classifier. And as you can see, these numbers are a lot more balanced now. We have 55% F1 squared. The recall is a lot better, but precision is worse. If I'm not making a mistake, yeah, precision is worse because again, you have to give up something. And uh, when we do things in PyCaret, we can plot the precision recall curve or we can plot the threshold and we can find a threshold which is a bad, it's, it's gonna give you a balanced version of these things as well. So that, that's another way of dealing with imbalanced data set. All right, so yeah, so you can, you, you, can, you can handle the imbalanced data set either by changing the model itself to treating um, the observations with different weights or changing the way you are calcul you're reporting the performance metrics, right? So that's, that's another way as well. Uh, okay, so this is our typical ROC-AUC curves. We have done this multiple times before, so I'm not gonna spend time here, uh, but, but you get the idea. And by the way, we can do it in PyCaret as well. So no skill, 50%, in our case, random forest, 78%. This is okay, and the data set is not highly, highly imbalanced. Remember, it's 77%, 22%, so it's relatively imbalanced. So I would take it. I would say, yeah, I, will, I, will I can trust these numbers as well. So if it is anything greater than random choice, I'm excited, it's better than nothing. But sometimes, remember, you have to, you have to come up with a better benchmark. Actually, this, this is a very good example. Let me, let, me, let me pause for a second. So our benchmark is not flipping a coin here. It's not 50%. Our benchmark is, let me show you, is this, right? Because remember, if I have a data set that 78% of the data is no defaults, so what is my benchmark? My benchmark is 
come up with a model that always predict no default, no default, no default. So what is the accuracy of that model? 78%, okay? So the benchmark accuracy is 78%, but uh, and if it is highly imbalanced, so maybe accuracy is not a good benchmark, you have to look at the F1 score. But anyways, just remember this number, 77.8, your accuracy benchmark is not flipping a coin, it's not 50%, it's 78%. So that's something to pay attention. All right, so now let's do the feature importance. So again, one of my favorite capabilities of decision tree based models is this feature importance because it makes it more interpretable. And uh, now I'm going to work with the balanced random forest that I that we trained. So this is our random forest trained. I'm going to say dot feature importance. So these are going to be the feature importance values numbers. And we can look at the feature importance names. So, and this is the ordering. The first one is limit balance. The second one is sex. The third one is education and etc. This is hard to read. Let's put it in a nice data frame and order it, sort it, right? So I'm going to say these are the features. These are the feature importance and then sort it by the feature importance. Save it as a data frame. Show me the head of the data frame or show me the entire data frame. All right. So we go from least important to most important. This makes perfect sense. So if you have ever worked with you know, credit card data sets or default, no default kind of data sets, uh, payments matters most, right? So if you are, if you're having any kind of delay in payments you know, in this month, current months, last month, and, and month before, right? So, and then, so these are going to be the most important one as our model is capturing them beautifully. Then we have the bill amount and look at, let's focus on the least important one. Does it make sense? Absolutely, right? So marital status, gender, education, age, these are the least important one and it makes perfect sense, right? Uh, yeah, so, and then we can visualize it like this using Seaborn and this is a lot easier to read. So I can say magnitude wise, pay one is a lot more important than pay two, but you should not read too much into these numbers specifically, the value of those things, right? Because again, you can normalize it and think of it as a percentage as well. All right, so that was the scikit-learn version of random forest classification. Let's do the pie carrot one. Okay, so for pie carrot, uh, I always want you to check out the documentation of pie carrot and the uh, model container. So I think I already have the model container open. Let's check it out. Yeah, the model container is here. Well, you go back to container. This is documentation. Go to models and then you go to classification and search for random forest, random forest. Yeah, and as you can see, this is directly coming from uh, from scikit-learn ensemble mo module. So this is this is what we did manually, right? Now we are using PyCaret. And what I'm interested typically in this documentation, in this model container, if I scroll down, look at the tuning parameters, and this is the limitation of the tune model that we are using with PyCaret, right? Remember, number of estimators goes all the way to 300. So if you want to do 500, it's not there. You have to do it uh, using scikit-learn. Max depth go all the way to 10. So again, if you want to do 20, you have to do it manually. And I think we talked about these things in random forest regression as well. So check it out, you know, check these things out as well. Uh, just be aware, what are the limitations of PyCaret? Okay, so when it comes to tuning model, uh, if you're running it in Google Colab, make sure you do pip install PyCaret. And uh, here you don't need to pip install the full version. And because you're doing it in Google Colab, so you have to do it every single time. So you don't need to do the full version. But for, for boosting models, you know, if you want to get access to Cat Boost and LightGBM, you have to do the full version. Okay. So I'm running it on my local computer. I already have access to full version. So this is what I see, right? So let's go ahead and import the plain version of the data, the raw data. And this is the unprocessed data. So going back to strings and not categories and etc. And I'm going to use the setup function from PyCarry to do the job for me. So let's from classification, let's import everything. Let's set up the experiments and let's do preprocess equal to true. So it's going to go ahead and figure out do we have to change these strings to numbers and etc. etc. The features that we're ignoring, of course, is ID and what else? So we have target variable default and nothing, nothing fancy here. That's it. So let's go ahead and set up the experiment. And uh, yeah, then so it seems that we have one original feature. The rest of them are numerics. 
uh, and we have three categorical features. Okay, so these three categoricals are going to be those three strings that automatically it's, uh, it, it captured them, right? Okay, so yeah, these are available models in the full version of PyCaret, right? So if you're doing in the, the light version, you, you're not going to see CatBoost or even LightGBM. XGBoost is there. In PyCaret 3.0, XGBoost is there. But LightGBM CatBoost is, I think it's not, and a couple of other models is not there. Uh, okay, so the, we are going to create our own random forest model. So we say create model, estimator random forest. I'm not going to run the rest because it's going to take some time and we want to make this video short. Uh, but we have done this multiple times. We are doing tenfold cross validation and it seems that the, on average we are doing 46% F1 score. This is our random forest. If we tune the random forest, can we do any better? Well, it seems that no, but don't be surprised. This is because the, the pi carrot tuning parameters were probably not the one that we should look for in this case, okay? That's not always the case, but this is something that typically happens. Uh, or if happens, now you know what's going on, okay? And it, it, I think it, it, it's going to give you some notes as well. So fitting fivefold, let's see, original model was better than the tuned model, right? Okay, so hence it will be returned and et cetera, et cetera, okay? So uh, we can do some plots. So we are going to work with the tune random forest. We can we can do we can work with the random forest as well. Uh, these are the parameters of the tune version. This is our RC AUC for different classes. So it's even better than what we put together. So this is for both classes. And here this is our confusion matrix. Again, good numbers, bad numbers off the diagonal. This is our classification report for class one. If you're doing a classification task, typically you're interested in class one, if it is binary, right? This is what you're interested in. So these are the, these are the numbers that we are looking into. 65% precision, 37% recall, which is not good, and 48% F1 score, which is, again, not, not the best out there. And these are our support numbers. 1,991 observations, no default, 7,000 default. And yeah, so this is what I was talking about earlier. If you, if you plot the threshold plot, in PyCaret, it's going to give us a better combination of precision recall F1 score for specific thresholds. And the answer here is 30%. If the threshold is 30%, we get a good combination of precision, which is the blue one, the recall, which is a green one, and F1 score, right? So if you're curious, or if you want to, again, if you want to focus on precision recall, probably you should play on with that threshold. Remember, reducing that threshold means that avoiding too many false negatives and increasing the recall and decreasing the precision. So this is what we're doing, right? We go from right to left, and this is exactly what we're doing. Uh, I know it, it, it might seem a lot, but I'm repeating myself, I think, every every other class when we talk about classification, right? So this is probably the fourth time you're hearing me talking about this plot, right? Um, don't feel overwhelmed. And this is, this is completely natural. And then it will get better, I promise. You have to just keep practicing. And yeah, so we talked about this optimal threshold. This is our precision recall plot. Again, it's 55%. It's not the best. It's giving you average value of precision for all different levels of thresholds, right? Or different levels of recall. So 55%, again, it's not the best, but uh, it's not the worst either. So we can look at the decision boundary. So again, in, we have 23 dimensions. This is reduced to two dimension using PCA, principal component analysis, which by the way, we're going to cover it uh, in, in the unsupervised learning techniques. Uh, but anyhow, we are going from that high dimension to low dimension using PCA to visualize the decision boundary. And as you can see, this is a super complex, flexible model, right? And obviously we're overfitting here. So these are, these are overfittings, right? So why on earth we should have a gray area here? But anyways, Okay, so, and finally, we're doing our funny learning curve here. Now, the, the reason that I'm saying funny is that, first of all, if you're looking at the, at the accuracy, probably we should look into the uh, F1 score. That's going to be a better learning curve, but I think that's not doable in PyCaret. So if you want to do it, you have to do it manually. Or, I don't know, if, if you figure it out, uh, let me know in the comment section, and then we can play around with it. Uh, okay, but this this is telling me, this is screaming at me that this tuned random force is kind of, well, this is a random force one. This is kind of overfitting absolutely in the train set, right? Because look at that, we're getting almost 
Uh, this is this is those ridiculous areas, right? We're getting 100 percent accuracy and cross violation. The best the best we can do is around 81 ish or yeah, 81 percent ish. And uh, the gap is there. So we and it seems that no matter how many we increase this observation, it's not getting there. They're not converging. So it means that this model is missing something fundamentally, right? So, so probably, again, I should not read too much into this learning curve because it's based on accuracy. I would love to see the one based on F1 score, then I can make a better judgment, right? But based on accuracy, there's not much to, to read about it. And then finally, this is our feature importance, which is consistent with what we had. But interestingly, age is there in our case age was at the very bottom but here this is um, again this is uh me personally uh when, when it comes to using pi carrot i basically use it as a benchmark right I, I run a horse race between different machine learning models using pi carrot and i pick the winners and then i'm gonna go and play around with it from scratch using scikit-learn. So this is the way that I want to operate, not 100% rely on PyCare thing, because again, I want to be able to tune everything I need. Uh, okay, so that was it. So this is the classification part. In the next video, I'm gonna do the boosting. So this is the topic for our next video. Until the next one, take care.